DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Wedding Chat with Jeremy Breck and Dave Turnier. Dave! Jeremy! How you doing? <laughs> Good. Hey, so, so I'm curious on why this is just specifically Wedding Chat, because you do a lot more than weddings. I do a lot more than weddings. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can pull people in with the word wedding in this whole chat thing, and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. I have to, quickly for the record, by the way, uh, and I know this is this is you know breaking that third wall, but I, I love how when we start the show we pretend like we're just starting a conversation with each other. <laughs> yeah, Dave. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, you know the, the, the funny thing of all that is like we're talking like 10, 15 minutes before the show even starts, and it's like, why are we not recording this? This is great. And then it's like, okay, let's record. That sucked. So true. So true. <laughs> but yes, well, hey, once again. Uh, Another week. What week? What week number are we on? I think seventy-five. I think is what we're at. Yeah. Correct us if if that sounds off um, to anybody watching. But I think yeah, I think this is week seventy-five of wedding chat. Yeah. With and you probably missed. You probably missed like I don't know the first seventy of them. Would be my <laughs> if, you're, if you're searching, they're out there. Lost in the ether of the interwebs. Yes. Well, hey guys, I am Jeremy Breck, DJ Jer. You probably have seen a little of my shop time videos, uh, hopefully a little inspiration. And, uh, and we're actually, we're going to talk about loyalty um, today in this because uh, brand loyalty and so on. Um, Cause I just got a call from, uh, from Chauvet and I had some great conversation with Jeff Short and, and I just want to just talk a little bit about that. And, you know, some of the, some of the things that I hear and feedback from watching our videos and, or my videos, um, uh, that I, I would just I would love to share with everybody kind of my appreciation for you know the feedback that we get and uh, the followers that you know they get something out of what we do. So, um, right. so I'm I'm DJ Jer out of uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Run a multi op system, and obviously we do weddings because that's what this <laughs> this whole thing is about. But we do a lot more than that. Uh, we do a lot more than that. We actually just did a really awesome uh, speakeasy corporate event this last weekend, which. We can talk about some other time, but uh, it's pretty stellar. Yeah. So, Dave, tell us about you, Dave. Curious. Uh, good evening, afternoon, good morning, depending on when you're watching this. I'm Dave Turnier. Uh, Special Request Weddings is my company name. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that here, but uh, yeah, that's what I do. Uh, I am a single op, so a little different than Jer. Uh, but of course, the common theme that Jer and I have is weddings. Um, some of you might know me from a djthought.com. That's my where I share weekly some perspective of mine or some process of mine or uh, some DJ thought that might interest people. So, and, and, I, and I'm starting to share a meme once a week too, by the way. I don't know if you saw the one I shared last week, Jared, but it kind of blew up on the internet, which was really nice to see. I probably did, but what was it? It was the uh, <clears throat> something to do with it's common to find a 2000, 3000, 4000, even $5,000. Oh. So why the surprise on a DJ is that much? 
Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I, think I, I think I liked it. I don't know if I hearted it, but I liked it. I gave it a thumbs up. You know, you think you know who your friends are. Anyway, so that's who I am. And and weddings are primarily my business, actually. Jerry, I know I know maybe you're a little more split with other things too, but uh last time I looked at numbers, something like 80, 83. 82% of revenue for me is weddings. Nice. So yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty big. Yeah. That's pretty healthy. So with very low production. Yeah. Would you say that, um, you know, up there in Canada, uh, Dave's from Canada, by the way, you can probably tell by his Canadian accent. Um, do, does, does weddings seem to be the most do pop? I'm sorry. Do weddings seem to be the most popular thing in your market, in your country? Um, I know that you've kind of taken weddings to the next step with mm -hmm. becoming a master of ceremonies because in tradition it's usually a cousin or a friend or an uncle or somebody that is the MC. so i know you guys have really progressed in that um but do you see weddings as like the big thing for you guys for me they are by choice i mean i know colleagues of mine here in manitoba who do a lot of production work as well and you know they they specialize in corporate events as well but for me it's been a choice uh, when I rebranded my company a number of years ago to to read Special Request Weddings, I remember getting one really sideways cockeyed look. I'm not sure if I've ever told you this, but from one DJ in my region, he's like, Dave, why would you name your company that? Now people are going to only think that you do or specialize in weddings. And I was kind of like, perfect. You're <laughs> on to something. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's something that I've taken on by choice because uh, as you alluded to, you're right. The, the the DJ as the MC is not a an overly common thing countrywide in Canada. Oftentimes it is a family or a friend or, you know, Uncle Tom. I hope he hasn't drank too much. Yeah. So, uh, it's become, uh, you know, for a number of us here in Manitoba, the specific province I live mm -hmm. in has become a bit of a niche thing. You could say that, you know, we are DJs who also excel at being the MC. So that's kind of what's worked to set us apart. Yeah. And now they're thinking, gosh, I hope Dave didn't drink too much. Instead of on yeah, I, I get a little heavy on the H two O sometimes, but I try <laughs> not to let it, you know, get carried away. Oh, so good, so good. Uh, so actually, I, I want to touch on shaken, not stirred. H two O. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> I want to touch on two things. Uh, you talked about your personal branding that you did for your company with adding weddings and special requests, and I'm curious on how you came up with special requests. But the other two things that I want to point out is. Um, in Mobile Beat this upcoming uh, upcoming season, Jason Janai is actually going to be doing a seminar on branding. Uh, and I I'm, just I'm excited, saw that the other day. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to see that. I, I have a lot of respect for Jason. I've worked with Jason in the past on Mobile Beat, and uh, you know the fact that he's actually going to be presenting, I think, is super cool. That's something that I would agree, or I think everybody would agree, that he is phenomenal at uh, his branding, his the way he. Um, portrays his company, you know, as uh, the style that he does, um, all of his branding matches that. And so I'm, I'm curious um, to, to hear his presentation, mm -hmm. but I want to also know about how, why you branded it the way you did a little bit more. Um, and then speaking of mobile beat, you have the, you had, there was a contest going on for mobile beat passes or something with brand loyalty. Yeah, absolutely. And we're so, going to talk about brand loyalty, but tell me a little bit. <laughs> this is all wrapping up together. It's perfect. Wow. Nice segues, Jared. Like one to the other, like, bam. Yeah. Great. Now we have uh, eight segues to follow. Which one do we want to go with first? Well, you know what? Shout out to guys like Jason Janai, uh, Joe Bunn, uh, even M Matthew Beauchamp uh, over in Toronto. I mean, these guys are all on par with their branding. They're really spot on. And if you and if you don't know these people, check them out. Um, they're, they're just they're fantastic people to learn from. What, when it came to branding for me, I mean, as some may know, I, I sometimes smile and grimace a little bit when people say, hey, Dave, can you give me some advice on my website or, you know, social media? And I go, you know, I'm not real active on that type of stuff. Not like they say I should be. But when it does come to that bit of branding that you've asked about, I, I came up with special request, I guess, that part of things because I wanted to be known as someone who really went above and beyond to personalize and create something unique and creative out of every event. So, you know, I wanted, you know, look, special requests are something I specialize in. I wanted that whole idea to kind of sit within my company name. And the people that I've worked for, the people that have been guests at the weddings and the events that I've played for, know that I love, this might sound red lights to some DJs, but they know that I love, love, love requests. Not 
only because it's input from someone as to what I might play, but I get to create a unique moment of interaction between myself and that guest as they're requesting a song, which might lead them to remember me when they need an event. So I love taking requests. I love customizing and personalizing things to my events. So that's kind of where special request came from and then the weddings part followed because as I mentioned, uh, me specializing in weddings was very much a choice, very much by design branding decision I wanted to make because those are the events I really, really, really love. And no, it's not just because, you know, they help me pay the bills and the other events don't contribute quite in the same way. Uh, people that have followed my blog, uh, you know that, you know, for me, money is secondary. I, th th these moments, these conversations, these connections with people, I absolutely love that stuff. And, you know, I, I struggle to get that sometimes at the corporate level. So that's why I love weddings so much. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, you know, when you talk about branding and I'm not, I'm not talking the Facebook page, I'm not talking the website, um, at your event, how do you brand your event? How, how many times do you say special request weddings? Mm -hmm. How are you displaying who you are? Um, it, cause I know a lot of people ask, you know, do you put your logo on your facade? Do you not put your logo on your facade? Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen some really ridiculous branding at people's weddings and, and I'll be happy to share some of it and trust, I can guarantee they're not watching because, um, they don't really <laughs> care about education. Um, but tell me, uh, tell me how you brand special requests at every wedding that you do. So how I brand special request weddings, uh, and the work that I do at the weddings is quite simply, um, <laughs> with this and that's it. I have the cleanest, uh, most unobtrusive, most unnoticeable DJ booth you've ever seen. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a facade. I have no lighting on my booth. It's just, I bring my own four foot table. I have a black scuba skirt, like a scrim king, uh, you know, over it or white, depending on the wedding. <laughs> I had no idea what a scuba skirt was. So <laughs> that's what they call them in the decorating world. FYI. <laughs> Got it. Um, yeah, uh, and, uh, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking scuba Steve wearing a skirt, <laughs> that's Dave going out there doing his thing, do my thing. <laughs> that reminds me of a Robin Williams live on Broadway bit that I will not say on this show. Um, <laughs> he has a bit, Robin Williams live on Broadway. It's an HBO special. He's a bit about, uh, about the luge. Check it out. Funniest thing. Right. I've seen. Anyway. Um, yeah, I have a bit, I mean, I, yeah, my, my booth is very, I mean, I have a, I have a controller that sits on my table inside my Odyssey case. I have a pair of MacBook Pros and that's it. The table's clean. No, you that's don't it. have anything that, you don't have anything that's like blocking your, blocking the view of your equipment or anything like that. No. Okay. And, that, and that's maybe a separate topic, but one of the reasons I avoid a facade is so that I have a ridiculously clean setup because I think some people use a facade to give them the illusion of a clean setup. But the moment you walk around behind, what the? <laughs> oh, guilty? Yeah. Well, ours ours is for cable management. It allows us because our cables will come down and you know, we've got we have like our our wireless transmitters for our lighting, we have our 12 our 512 box, we've got a laptop, uh, our stands, we've got the case. And I like to have my paperwork like my paperwork is laid out on certain things. Like I have a whole layout of the agenda, the timeline, the, you know, the scripts, the everything. Plus I also have in a leather binder. And that's one thing that I think is also important is people, they always like, they try to cover their equipment or they try to cover certain things to give that cleanliness look. Um, one thing that we do as an MC is we always have it in like, we're, I can't stand when, I see pictures of DJs walking around like this. They're doing the grand introductions or they're introducing the toast and speeches and they got this piece of paper mm -hmm. in their hands. Okay. Right. If you don't know their names, if you, if you need that as a crutch, at least put it in some type of a binder. Don't do a clipboard. You're not there to like check people in. You're not coat check. You're not, I mean, just get something that looks nice. I don't right. even have it here. It's in my, it's in my case, but um, I mean, it's, it's a very professional, like a, a leather portfolio that all of my stuff is in there. And I use that almost like I'm singing in a choir. You know, you don't go to a, you don't go to a choir or you go to a, a you know, a concert and the choir sit here with their music and they're, you know, talking into their, into their paper. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that's that's one thing. I, again, we talk about facades. That's that's another type of facade, and, and I wish people would keep right. those things in consideration. God, that's another conversation we could have one day. Holy topics coming up everywhere here. Great. I uh, I only have my stuff printed out now in a binder if my computer fails. I do all of the grand entrance, all that type of stuff, introducing toast speeches, whatever, from behind my DJ booth, and it's all, and it's all simply on one of my computers. Okay, hold on a second. You <laughs> introduce from behind your booth? Yes, sir. And then you run out and go get them the microphone or what? No, two microphones. So you've already given them the microphone. Correct. And you're back behind your booth saying, please yeah. tell me welcome, Dave Turnier. Yes. Dave stands up. Oh, we, oh, so always two wireless mics. Um, this is the, the, the speeches toasts always happen from the head table nine times out of yeah. 10 because yep. I've made them happen that way. Yep. Uh, thank you, Bill Herman, entertainment mm -hmm. experience, staging, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, credit straight to him, actually, like directly to him for that. Yeah, he. I don't know about him. I mean, he's doing a workshop. We just talked about this. You know, he's doing a <laughs> workshop and stealing more people's money. <laughs> no. That Herman, we, that love guy. we love you, Bill. I mean, Bill, um, he seriously, is, his workshop is amazing. Entertainment experience. It's yeah. going on right now. If you missed it, you're going to have to wait a year because he only does it like once a year. So too bad. that's true. That is true. But, uh, but yeah, that... Um, that's how I accomplish that. So there's a wireless mic. Everybody that's toasting from the head table has already been instructed the order that they're toasting in. So when they're done toasting, they know who to hand the microphone to next. And while mm. they're doing that, I'm doing the transition from where I'm standing on another microphone. That way I'm able to keep my microphone and the EQ settings all exactly the same and only be adjusting the one that all these different people are using, right? Yeah, that's interesting. I uh, I'm the complete opposite. I maybe it's because I'm a control freak, but it's it's when I hand the microphone off and I walk them through every little step. You know, like you said, you have to coach them, uh, yeah. and that's extremely important. Yeah. But I tell them when you're done, hand me the microphone back, and then I'll introduce the next individual. Uh, and to me, I like that because when I'm introducing, it keeps the attention over to where the present or the the this person who's speaking is at. As opposed to them looking over there, oh, the speech is going on. And now please help me welcome attentions over here, Christina Aguilera. And then they go back over here, you know, so there's like all this jumping around. And, and maybe, like I said, maybe that's just the way I do it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm interested well, to hear. It, well, it, it is actually the way you do it. <laughs> well, yes, it is. But I'm, I'm interested to hear how many people, you know, how they introduce. Like, do they... And we have two microphones as well. And ours is a backup. And also if someone's like, Hey, can we have two mics for our, our, our speeches? Then I have that. I have it available. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I think it's that me being out in front and interacting with that moment that's happening, I think mm -hmm. is what makes it strong for me. But I also understand why you do it the way you do it too. Curious. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh we can go down this rabbit hole for a moment. One thing that I love about that moment is, you know, if it's a, uh, you know, if it's, if it's the best man or the maid of honor, having just wrapped up her toast, his or her toast, they're quite often immediately putting the microphone down. And while people are applauding, they're embracing or whatever mm -hmm. with the bridegroom, right? And the moment that applause starts to die down as people who have, you know, trained when it comes to emceeing, no, you know, as that applause comes down is when you start talking, never talk over applause, don't kill that, yada, yada, yada. But I'm able to then start talking right away without ever having physically gotten in the way of the emotional moment that was happening there, especially for the photographer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the, and, that's, the and we, we definitely wait for that moment to finish. We, uh, I would rather it die completely yeah. out than me jump in and grab the microphone yeah. or, you know, right when they're embracing, I'm not going to go up and try and grab the microphone from behind the bride's back because the maid of honor still has it in her hand. You know, I'm letting that moment finish up. And as soon as, you know, as soon as the applaud comes down, I usually have the microphone already in my hand at that point. Um, otherwise, if I don't, I just, I, I accent that moment just even a little bit more. So I will, you know, I'll say, wow, you know, that was, that was a very touching speech. You know, thank you. Got it. Thank you, Abby, whatever it is. Um, and now um, some words from our best man and then basically transition into that. And then I hand the microphone over. And, the, and I think the thing I fear with that whole thing is they, they, they've had drinks. They talk, I talked to them 20 minutes ago. Um, how much of the information have they already forgotten? Yeah, so true. 
So it's like, okay. Not not it, saying you guys shouldn't talk to these people. You should, but yeah, you're right, Jerry. Yeah. They do forget some, yeah. And I, I've had that where I went over all the instructions and I'm like, you know, I always tell them when you're done, just hand me the microphone back and you'd be amazed how many, how many of them will get done. They'll embrace, they'll do that. And I'm standing waiting for them right there, you know, waiting for them to hand me the microphone. And then they're like looking off to the side, like, okay, who's going to go next? It's like, I'm, I'm, I'll take that. <laughs> so, well, so, so, so maybe, maybe. For a wedding, maybe you could try using that second mic so that that moment doesn't happen. Yeah, I do maybe that. I don't know. I could do that. Interesting. That's interesting. Um, so when it comes to branding, that's that's pretty much me. I mean, I I don't. I mean, I introduce myself once at the beginning of a night. Is that what this was about? <laughs> Gosh, I introduce myself <laughs> once at the beginning of a night and. I don't say my company name, nor do I say welcome to the XYZ Hilton, whatever. Um, people don't yeah. care about that. Uh, that no. venue needs no additional recognition. I mean, everybody <laughs> saw the name on the front door. Enough said. Or people would be like, the Hilton? I thought we were at the Holiday Inn. What the hell? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, for, for those who have followed me, you know that if I did an intro, intro like that, I would say a whole lot of things like, welcome to the field and the tent that we've set up here. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. that's it. My company name gets zero mention at my weddings, um, even at the end of the night. Uh, and look, I'm not hating on people that do. I mean, please, you know that I'm Dave. You know, when I rant, it's like a soft, soft, soft thing. I, I don't yeah, no, and, and you will hate me because that is really the only time I will actually say my company name is at the end of the night to say, uh, you know, again, thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. My name is Jeremy Breck with DJ Jer Events and Lighting Design. It was an honor to be here tonight, and tonight is not about me. It's about these two. One more time. Round of applause. So I, I briefly say, this is who I'm with. This is who I am. And then I put that attention back to where it belongs, and that's the bride and groom. Nice. Um, I, nice. will, I will open with you know um, my, my introduction or my welcome, I should say. You know, My name is Jeremy Breck. I'm your master of ceremonies, but I don't use my company name because, it, like you said, that, that's not relevant. The only thing that's relevant is my name because they're going to come up and talk to me like a normal person. They're going to understand that I am just like you guys. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm not a stuffy master of ceremonies. This is my name. You can come up and talk to me. Um, granted, I, I don't say all that stuff, but they understand that. And you'd be amazed how many people are a little bit more open to having a conversation with you because you created that personality right off the bat Absolutely. and let them know that. I'm a normal person. Absolutely. Well, as I've written about in the past, I consciously make an effort to blur the line between, was he hired or is he like a friend we didn't know about? Yeah. And if I was to say my company name, poof, gone goes that magic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's just a dollar figure. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. So, um, okay. So you had this big uh, contest going on um, with some brand loyalty. Tell us a little bit about what you had, uh, what you had going on for, for Mobile Beat. Yeah, so one of the things that I have considered for a lot of years is that when I attend a conference, uh, my attendance of that conference isn't entirely complete until I've done something to support a couple of the DJ companies that were there. And when I say DJ companies, I don't mean, you know, DJ companies, I mean the, the PA companies, the, the sound, the lighting companies, the DJ yeah. event planners, mm -hmm. the music suppliers of the world, that type of thing. The vendors like NLFX and what have you. And uh, I've been wanting to write a blog post about this for a while. I, uh, you know, look, we, we've all bought the occasional off-brand thing, yours truly included. Uh, but I, I really, I just, I've wanted to write for a while on the idea that maybe people reconsider a little bit that one of the reasons that, you know, we, we buy a Chauvet or a Sure or a Bose or an EV or a Newmark product is because they help keep DJ conferences alive. Yeah, absolutely. These conferences cost way more money than any single group of DJs are willing to shell out for these conferences. So we either support these, these vendors that make these conferences happen or these conferences disappear. Exactly. And regardless if you go for the content of a conference, it's, it's, the, it's the people you get together with. It's the networking. It's the yada, yada, yada. And I know you might say, well, Dave, you can make that happen at any point in time. Well, sure you can, but conferences are such a natural and easy place for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, my blog post was about that. And then I wrapped it up by, by saying, you know, Ryan Berger uh, from Mobile Beat, you know, has g gave me a pass to give away to a first time attendee or someone who is not attended in, in some time. And uh, I decided to tie 
that in. He says, look, Dave, give it to one of your blog subscribers. And I said, okay, well, that, that's cool. What else can we do with this? And so the contest I've created is, you know, uh, go to the blog, click on the link and you fill in some love for a vendor, you know, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, Newmark or, or Serato, whoever that you love, show a little love for them. And if you want to, you know, multiply your entry to the free contest pass giveaway by 10, go and write a positive review of that company on their Facebook page and then send me a screenshot. And so, yeah, that's, that's the contest I'm running. It runs for a week. So uh, check it out at cool. djbot.com. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I wish, I wish people would understand that, you know, these shows, uh, you look at mobile beat, you look at, uh, DJ times, um, Midwest DJs live CDJ show in Toronto. All of yeah, them. There's, there's so many shows that would not survive. It was just ticket sales. Right. When you look at some of these presenters, some of these presenters cost $30,000 just for them to come in and speak for an hour. And I know right. people are like, that's, that's outrageous. There's absolutely no way it's, it's true. Um, I've been on that side of it and I've seen how much it costs to bring in red foo. I know how much it costs to bring in, um, uh, Jeffrey Gittimer and, Jeffrey uh, Gittimer, yeah. What was the fellow from that TV show as well? Like I was amazing. Um, uh, from bar rescue. Yeah. 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 Taffer, John Taffer. Yeah, exactly. He's remarkable. Remarkable. And, and, and people want, they're like, Oh, well, you know, the, the speaker this year just wasn't very good. Well, you maybe you should have paid more. No. Um, <laughs> It's, it's just because they do get limited on a budget and they can't survive just on ticket sales. Right. And you know, here's the bigger thing. Like they have to fill so many rooms at a show to actually host the conference. Right. Uh, like they have to sell so many hotel rooms, you know, that are associated with the show for them to hit a quota, to make sure that they can cover costs. And there's just so much involved. And without, like you're saying, without um, all these different uh, vendors that come in, and show their support as well, there would be no show. So our job is to support those people. Right. Uh, you know, I, I talked about, uh, I've talked about Electro Voice in the past, um, and this is kind of the brand loyalty part that I want to talk about. I don't know about you, I've been a huge EV fan um, since I started. My first speakers were Eliminator Eyes, uh, EV Eliminator Eyes, and they were like, they were perfect for me. You know, they were good sound, you know, they were just the right size. Yeah. And then we kept upgrading. We kept getting the um, uh, SX 500s and SX 300s and all this stuff. And, and then there was a part where it was like, okay, I need something different. And I tried to step out. And as you know, I had, I purchased Bose a couple years back and I ran with Bose for the, for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And the reason it, it wasn't that I wasn't brand loyal to Electro Voice. Um, it was because I just wanted something that was more uh, my style, something that was more, you talked about the branding. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, my look for me personally was sleek, was clean. And, you know, there just wasn't anything out there. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get a calm speaker. I'm going to buy the Bose speakers. Right. And it works great. Um, but now that Electro Voice came out with these Evolve 50s, it blows the <laughs> the bows away. And yeah. Ben Stowe did a fantastic job of comparing. Um, it was, oh gosh, what was it? Um, the Evox. Yeah. Uh, another one, FBT and the Evolve 50. And the right. thing I loved about it is Ben didn't say, this is the winner. This is the one you have to go with. He right. said, here's all the data. You decide what you feel is best for you. Yeah. Because I think, you know, going back to that brand loyalty, I'm glad I went back to Electro Voice and I'm glad Electro Voice put the time, the effort into creating a speaker that is exactly what I needed. Uh, I mean, literally they asked, you know, what is it that you would want in your speaker? And I said, mm -hmm. it's got to be clean. It's got to be sleek. It's got to look good. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was fun to be a part of that whole process. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I think when you look at some of these, these vendors that come to these shows, they're not just doing it to sell product. They do it to get feedback. They want to hear from DJs. And so if you have those DJs who are like, well, you know, I wish they would do a better job with this or wish they could make this happen or do that, come to the show and share that information with them. Again, mm -hmm. another reason to go to a DJ show or to go to an expo uh, to, to give your feedback. And right. it makes a huge difference because you know what? Like I said, Mike Dusso, I I've talked about him in the past um, with Electro Voice. Uh, he listened. He listened to not just what I wanted, but what a lot of people wanted. 
And they took their time. They didn't just throw something out there just to be in the market. They took their time. They learned and they came out with something that I really consider to be truly amazing. Um, And again, it all comes back to brand loyalty and it comes back to loyalty from the brand. And I think that's important for people to understand. So true. Well, you know, sp- speaking of the, the uh, Evolve 50, I'm actually pumped and maybe we can chat about uh, organizations a little bit and community, that type of thing. But uh, that, <laughs> la- later on this month, uh, the uh, the local CPDGA networking night here in Manitoba, uh, we actually have an Evolve 50 coming out for demo to that meeting. And uh, uh, the organizer of our regional team leader here, Kent Goodmanson, he said, hey, Dave, c- c- can you bring your bows so we can run them side by side? I'm like, Sure. <laughs> You're going to be a puppy with his tail leaving or your tail between your legs. Yeah. Well, look, I've been, uh, you know, I've been looking forward to trying them out. So pretty pumped about that. But uh, you guys, I, I, I seriously think you guys are going to be really impressed. Um, and I thought the bow sounded great, but yeah, it's one of those things you don't know what you got until it's gone. Uh, <laughs> when I was doing the testing on the, on the Evolve, they're like here, test it out, you know, tell us what you think. And I ran it and I used it for some events and I've got, I got shop time videos out there about it. Um, yeah. And then they're like, okay, you got to send it back. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm just devastated. And then I would use, I would use my L1s again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just missing so much. You know, there was just, wow. it was all, all the sound was here and there was nothing here and there really wasn't that much here. Um, right. And you don't realize that until again, you hear something else. Yeah, I'm so, excited. I'm pumped. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a, it's gonna be a fun network night for any any Canadians watching here in Manitoba. Come on out! It's oh god, Ken's gonna shoot me. I should know the day of this. What are it? Tuesday, November twenty eighth. Come to Winnipeg, everybody. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> so okay, so you're talking about the CDPJ DJ, CDJ CPDJ. There we go, CPDJ Canadian Professional okay. Disc Jockey Association. So that, that's what our topic is supposed to be about, but this has actually been a lot of fun, you know, um, going down the numerous rabbit holes that we have. Um, Sorry, John. <laughs> yeah. Try to edit this one. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what, what value um, you guys feel that your association brings to its members. Uh, you know what? I, um, as many of, you know, p- people who've read anything I've shared, community over competition, Petition, you know, the idea that <clears throat> collaboratively we can create so much more than all working in isolation is an idea that I have, you know, I live, I, I eat, I breathe. I'm a networking hound. I love networking. I, you know, I love conversations like this, Jerry, you and I and other DJs. And uh, th- that's just, that's what belonging to any association feels like to me. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I wrote a post a while ago, it was earlier in this, it was just after Mobile Beat, you know, just talking about how what we do as DJs is, is an oddly isolative job. Is, is isolative a word? Somebody please let me know. Uh, but I mean, you're right, we're, uh, you know, we're often, you know, hours managing music or writing this or prepping this or whatever. And then we're, boom, we're thrust into the spotlight, like just overnight. Now we're the center of attention. And that's a weird thing to sometimes be in. And I think a lot of DJs kind of get stuck in their own, go it alone type of thing and uh yeah being a part of an association you know whether it's cpdga or you know uh you know the the i mean you and i got to know each other really good through the wed guild as well there's something that that comes with community that we're working with other djs and having a relationship with them that just it's hard to explain when compared to just going it alone (laughs) yeah so what uh how, how many members do you guys have uh, we're in and around the 400, 450 in that, wow. that region. So, uh, sh- I don't think we'll hit 500 this year, but, uh, next year, that seems like a very, very probable goal. So for our little country, we're pretty happy with that. Your little country. Jeez. Oh, sorry. Population wise. You guys are like 10 times the size. Oh, okay. I have a shipment that's lost in your little country. Um, but they did find that. Yeah. I told you about that. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're not learning about that cause they found it now, but what yeah. piece of the time did they locate that on? <laughs> No, I asked them like, so was it in the bottom of the river? Yeah. So, uh, but okay. So there's, there's other associations though in Canada as well. Isn't, isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah. There's the CDJ and the C- CPDJ and I've been a, a very proud member of both. Um, okay. And uh, well, there's also a smaller regional association out in Alberta called AIM as well. Um, and then there's just look, 
And then there's just, you know, there's a, there's a great guy out in Waterloo who's just getting guys together for an evening just to brainstorm stuff. So an association doesn't have to be a formal thing yeah. necessarily. It just needs to be guys and girls getting together and sharing ideas and helping each other out. I mean, it's, it's such a simple concept, yet it's something that so few people actually do. That's a struggle, isn't it? Uh, it so is. you guys, um, I did all the talking last week, so you get to do a lot. You get to do some of the talking here. Uh, the the thing that I was really impressed with was your association actually combined with two other associations to create one association, uh, which we talked about a little bit. Oh, maybe not. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, let me just before I get rid of gets the wrong idea. Um, what we've done is three three associations. So the CPDGA here in Canada. Um, National Association of Disc Jockeys in the UK and the Disc Jockey Alliance of Australasia. We've just basically come together and formed a, an informal working relationship under just a banner name that we're calling the International DJ Alliance. So this is just three separate associations getting together quarterly for you know for group calls to share ideas and and help each other figure things out because we're we're. I mean, every single one of us in our own countries is trying to invent the wheel. And yeah. it seems a little bizarre to do that, again, in isolation from one another when somebody else maybe already has one part of it figured out. So, yeah. uh, you know, and, and the, the, the three, you know, executives from the three associations are now, you know, in a creative area where we can converse with each other between those calls. And uh, it, it's just... Yeah, so so wonderful. Thank you for the, the kudos on that. I appreciate that because that was yeah. uh, quite a year kind of in the making as far as how I pictured this might work out. So, so, uh, so you you basically have this. Like I said, you, you run me run me run through what exactly is all entailed. So you guys have a meeting with all three of you, or um, yeah. So executives from every association have, have been designated by their respective associations to be a part of this on behalf of those associations. And okay. we had our inaugural call last month, I guess it was interesting figuring that out between time zones of North America, the UK and <laughs> Australia, let me tell you. Um, and and your uh, going a different way down in Australia. It's a whole <laughs> man, a mess. Yeah. And we just, we just came out of the call going, this is really good. We, we need to do this more often. So we've agreed to on a quarterly basis. So every three months we'll, you know, designated executives will get together and we'll talk about, so, you know, what, what have you succeeded in over the last three months since we've last spoken? What challenges are you facing? Um, you know, is there some initiative that, you know, you want to put to this group to brainstorm, help get some more ideas on some more third party perspective. And I mean, truthfully, this is really new. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it kind of organically going to wherever it does with those loose guidelines, right? What's working, what's not, how can, how can we create new ideas? And uh, I, you know, between the group of us, I think we'll figure things out. You know, I think um, one of the things that so associations lack, and maybe you guys have this all figured out. Uh, and if you do, please tell me because I'll join, I'll join your association, but it would be great. You know, some, one of the things that I notice here in the U S is there's a good, a good network. You know, a lot of people communicate mm -hmm. through different cities and towns. I mean, you look at Mitch, he's traveling the country, Mitch Taylor's traveling the country, speaking at all these different, yeah. uh, these ADGA events, ADGA, right? Yeah. ADGA yeah. events. Yeah. Um, oh, lots of events. Mitch is all over the place. I can't keep track of him. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, you look at, you look at all those opportunities, but I feel what some of the opportunities that are missing is the educational opportunities. It's not just the networking and networking is extremely important because you get a lot of ideas and education through that, but to actually like, just, you know, provide information for people, right. um, for DJs, for people who are just starting out, um, mm -hmm. for people who have been in the business for a long time. Um, you know, just having like, here, go to this site and learn about this, learn about that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's just been, I, I think kind of a disconnect here in the U S. Um, and I, I think someone to pull all this stuff back together, uh, and mm -hmm. communicate with other associations and, and maybe combine associations, or I don't know what, I don't know what the answer is. And I'm not going to say I do well, know what the answer is. 
Uh, you know, a couple of comments I'll make on that is, you know, the, the umbrella that the three of us have currently, you know, the umbrella, the, the one common bond that we all hold is that we're all non for profits. So mm -hmm. that establishes a lot of the context for how an association operates and, and how responsible it is to its members. And, and yeah. that creates a, a common thread, a common bond conversation that I think is essential for the three of us to, you know, openly share with each other, right? Because we all understand each other clearly. We're all non profits. Yeah. We've got nothing to hide. I think. Things are so different from one country to another that individual identities need to be maintained. And, you know, my thoughts over the years have gone all over the place, right? Do we need one global association or do we need individuals in each country? And, and I'm currently on the wavelength of individual in each countries, but let's yeah. create some type of framework for nonprofit associations to, you know, have some, um, <clears throat> uh, some organized dialogue together. Because I think through that, a lot can be accomplished. You don't necessarily need a formal framework of some sort because yeah, things I, are so uniquely different from country to country, right? And, and I don't even mean just right. the style of events and the style of DJs, but also the maturity of the industry and, and the history that each industry has is very country specific, right? So I certainly won't dictate, you know, I don't want one group to dictate to other groups how things need to be done, but God, just, just get involved in a group because the, the value is so incredible. Again, I think. I think, the <laughs> I think what people fear is, well, if I'm into this association, then I have to share my secrets. And I think a lot of people fear sharing um, because then, well, now that person's going to run away, run away with my information or they're going to know what I do. Um, I mean, look how vulnerable we are here, Dave. We talk about everything that we do and right. we talk about our thoughts where if I didn't, would I be more successful? Maybe. But sometimes these conversations allow me to connect with people that might have answers for me or have different perspectives, yeah. which I have to be open to. Yeah. And it allows me to progress. It allows me to do something different and, and allow my company to, to change because we have to change. Yeah, it's uh, I'm trying to look up a quick quote here. Um, in the go giver, which some of you know, is just a, uh, uh, a massive book for me. I have that, um, yeah. You made yeah. me. Read it. I, I made you read it. That's right. Oh, you didn't make me. You told me about it, and then I made myself read it. Which is I, uh, you know, on the idea of sharing and you know joining something and being afraid to share. You know, most people. Uh, this is from the Go Giver. Here it goes. Most people are are afraid of giving, afraid of sharing, and they don't actually realize that that's the path to success. And then it goes on to say, but of course most people aren't nearly as successful as they like to be either. <laughs> yeah. Right. People are so afraid to give of themselves, not realizing that that's the key to success. And when they go, it is, I'm like, well, are you successful as you wish you were? Oh no, I guess not. I mean, they yeah. go so, so hand in hand. It's not even funny. Um, and, uh, Zig Ziglar in, uh, see you at the top. Like I said, I just, I just read that last week and he talks about, you know, you'll get what you want when you're done giving to others. And basically, <laughs> You, you have to give to others to achieve your wants. Right. Um, and that's not the exact quote, but that's what I took out of it was you have to give before you get. Right. You know, quick shout out here. I, I know John probably needs us to wrap up here right away, but quick shout out on this exact topic to uh, a man I've just recently, literally in the last 24 hours, become acquainted with Christos. Uh, Nikas, Christos, God, I hope I said your name right. He, uh, he just connected with me after discovering my blog. In fact, I forgot to actually ask him how he found it, but he is a DJ in Greece. Yeah. And he said, hey, Dave, just wanted to reach out and say, I, thank you for writing what you have in your blog. You put into words what I've been thinking about for many years. And, uh, and when it came to the idea of, of, of giving and, and, and creating things for DJs, you know, he and I have been having a conversation on Facebook about, you know, that... Uh, you, you've, you've got to give, you've got to set things up. You know, his, uh, what was his words? His words were, it's so great giving back to the community. And, you know, he said, I, uh, Oh God, I'm not finding the quote. So, so wrecking this. There we go. I want Adidas to be proud of what they do and how they can influence moments of such great importance. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, 
kind of bumbled that whole moment. But shout out to you, my friend, uh, my new friend, Christos. I'll be speaking with him actually uh, via video in a week from, uh, from Greece. Looking forward to chatting with him. Nice. He's He just finished organizing actually the first wedding DJ conference in Greece last year. And he's got another one coming up this coming year. So well, sounds like he's doing great things out there. So We should maybe go to Greece is what I'm taking out of that conversation. I'd love to. Christos, uh, I'm going to send him the link so he sees this. Uh, yeah. Let's make it happen. I've always wanted to go. So let's, I, I want to touch base, not, not in this show, but let's put it in the future. Um, we talked a little bit about brand loyalty and I would love to talk more about that because sure. I think it's important. Uh, and people are always asking, well, what, what kind of gear do you use or what do you use for this? What do you use for that? Um, maybe we should just have a, a gear talk on one of our shows and say, well, this is my microphone. This is my mixer. This is my, you know, I, I don't know. People tune out when it comes to gear so much. Um, people people t hate talking gear. I mean, speakers and lights are so boring to the average DJ that if we want our listenership to plunge, I suppose we can give her, but we'd have to clear it with John first. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I guess that will do it for this show then. We'll, we'll have that discussion. If you want us to talk gear... Um, let us know. I'll give you all the tips and, the tips and tricks that, that I use, but, uh, Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Breck, DJ Jer with DJ Jer shop time and the disc jockey news and DJ Jer events and lighting design in Sioux Falls. Thanks for watching. And Dave, who are you? I'm Dave, the guy with a sarcastic sense of humor, as y'all just found out. Um, uh, yeah, special request weddings, an author of a DJ thought.com, uh, contributor as well to disc jockey news. And, uh, Looking forward to seeing you all next week and at Mobile Beat in 2018. There you go. Cheers. Goodbye, everyone.